Hi everybody. This video is a short uh, excursus to object-oriented programming and I promise you that it's uh, only a short excursus. So first of all we import pandas spd and we import our titanic file and save it uh, in the variable titanic. And let's have a look at the first five rows. So we already know the data frame here. And in Python, everything is an object. So also our Titanic uh, tabular data or data frame is an object. And we can also check um, the data type of our tabular data. So let's uh, check the type of Titanic. So our Titanic tabular data is of the data type data frame, or in other words, it's an instance of the class pandas data frame. And with all objects, uh, there are object-specific attributes and methods uh, specifically designed for that data type. So over many years, more than 800 developers contributed uh, to de design uh, methods and uh, attributes, especially for uh, large and messy data organized in a tabular manner. And uh, this effort makes Panda so a powerful tool. But before we move on to methods and attributes of our Pandas data frame, we know that there are also built-in functions in Python that can be applied to many data types. So for example, we have um, the length function, which we can apply to lists, uh, tuples, or also numpy arrays. And uh, the length function uh, returns uh, the amount of elements in um, a list or a tuple. And we can also pass a data frame object to Python built-in functions. And uh, sometimes we get a helpful result and sometimes not. And uh, sometimes it's not even defined to pass a data frame to a specific Python built-in function. All right, so let's start and uh, let's pass to the Python built-in function length um, our data frame Titanic. And Python returns us 891. So, so from the last session, we know that our Titanic data frame has 891 rows. So the length function returns us in the amount of rows of our data frame. And we already know also the round function, so we can pass our titanic data frame. And let's say we want to round to zero digits. And let's see what we get here. And we can see here that by using the round function, each float object in our data frame is rounded to zero digits. So if we can see here the fare, so our first passenger paid 7.25 pound or dollar. And uh, this was rounded to uh, 7.0. And also here the second passenger paid 71.28 dollars or pounds and uh, this was also rounded to 71. So the round function rounds all float objects in our data frame by default. And we can also try to transform our data frame into an integer by using the int function. So let's see if this works here. And now so we get here an error message, integer argument must be a string, a bytes, like object or a number, not a data frame. So the integer function is uh, not defined for a data frame. And we can also use um, the min function, for example, which calculates in a list uh, the minimum element in the list. So let's see what we get here. And we get here h. So why do we get here h? So if we have a look at our data frame in our columns here, so alphabetically speaking, H is in the very first element starting with an A. So when passing a data frame to the min function, Python returns us the minimum column label. So in this case, it's here H because it's starting with an A. And I think this was uh, not what we intended here. So maybe uh, our intention was to get, uh, let's say, the youngest uh, passenger in our data frame or the lowest fare paid by a passenger. But our intention was not to get um, yeah, the column label, which uh, starts with an A actually. All right, so now let's move to data frame attributes. And the first attribute we already know. So we can check the shape of our data frame and it's uh, 891 rows and nine columns. And there's also the attribute size. So we get here 8019 and uh, what uh, pandas returns us is actually here 
the amount of all elements in our data frame. So we have 891 rows and nine columns. So 891 times nine gives us 8,019 elements in our data frame. And we can also specifically return the index labels. So here we have a range index starting from zero and ending at 890, so 891 excluding. And we can also explicitly check the column labels. So here our column labels are survived, passenger class, sex, and so on. Now let's move to data frame methods. And we already learned one of the most important methods. So we have the method dot head, which returns us in yeah, the very first rows of our data frame and by default the first five rows. So when importing a data frame, the head method is actually the very first method we will use in order to get the very first impression of our data frame. And also we already learned about um, the info method which returns us uh, meta information on our data frame. So we have 891 rows, we have nine columns. And for each column, we have a specific amount of non-null values and we have um, the data type in each column. And we have um, the memory usage of um, the total data frame. And now let's use another method called min. So in here we get for each column the minimum value. So um, we know that in the survived column there are the values zero and one and um, the minimum value is zero. For the passenger class, we have um, the values uh, one to three. So the minimum value is one. For the sex column, we have female and male and female comes uh, alphabetically before male. So we have female. Then the youngest passenger on the Titanic was only 0.42 years old. And there are passengers who didn't have any brothers, sisters or spouses aboard. And also there are passengers who didn't have any children or parents on board. And there are also passengers who yeah, actually didn't pay any fare. So the fare is zero. And if we compare here the min method with our build and function min here, then we see the power of the pandas data frame class because by applying the min method, um, pandas returns us um, the minimum for each column. So that's quite cool. So the min method is specifically defined for a data frame and gives us much more functionality and helps us much more than um, the Python function min. So this is what I wanted to show you that uh, yeah, the data frame class is uh, very powerful. And we can also have a look here at the documentation. So here you can see a description of Panda data frames. So it's a two-dimensional, a size mutable, potentially heterogeneous tabular data structure with label axis. And here you can find yeah, actually all attributes and all methods. So it's quite a large list here. Yeah, and in the next uh, lessons in our course, we will have a look at uh, many of these methods and learn a lot of functionalities. So hope to see you in the next lessons. Bye.